Today, I'll be taking you guys along on how I light my YouTube space. You know, this is a studio space, so if you're doing an interview for a client, you can apply all these tips that I'm talking about in this video to that same gig. But if you do a YouTube video in your bedroom, all these tips will also be helpful for you. Now, I do want to know that this is a studio space with some, I'd say, advanced equipment, but you can definitely simplify this whole process with smaller and cheaper lights. So don't feel left out if you don't have the lights that I'm having in this setup, but you know, just stick with me, you'll hear. So let's start with a clean canvas. So the first thing that I do is I set up my camera. So this is the FX6, this is my main camera that I use for a lot of stuff. Usually I shoot my YouTube videos on the FX3, but that's, you know, filming me from that side. Um, what is very important if I'm alone is either have a monitor through a HDMI cable or a wireless one. This one has a setup that has a wireless uh, transmitter built in. Not built in, but I built it this way. So I use this uh, Vaxxis monitor. So whenever that's done, I start with my key light, which is the Aperture 600X with a giant of a softbox, which is the 150 centimeter one. Uh, you could definitely use a smaller one. For example, the very, very popular uh, Light Dome 2, which is a 90 centimeter parabolic softbox, which is super nice. And I would definitely recommend this over the big one if you don't have the space. If you do this in your bedroom or if you do it in a, a tight space, use the smaller one. But if you do have the space and you do have the budget, this definitely creates a beautiful soft image with nice wrap around the subject. So yeah, it's a no brainer if you have the space. So we fire up this light using our Sidus Link app. Um, all the lights over here are hooked on to Sidus Link which is amazing, right? You just press this button and boom. You don't really see a thing, but it's working. Uh, so once that's done, I fire up the backlight, which is my practical, which is in the frame. And that's the B7C, which is a nice warm light for, uh, you know, some atmosphere and some, some depth. So let's close the curtains and get this baby rolling. All right, so once these lights are up, you can start to shape your image. So usually I just sit down and I pick my monitor up, put it next to me, and then I start to check if the exposures are at least a little bit good. Um, so right now I see that I can use a little bit more key. That's nice. There's a nice little shape on this side of the face, which I like. If I want more fill over here, I can use a fill light. But I like the moodiness, so this is usually what I prefer. What I definitely do want is a light that extends from the practical. Um, this is a trick to kind of make you think that the practical is doing all the work, but actually it's not. So let's flip that one on. A really important one here is that this light you're using must be of the same light quality as the practical in the frame. So this one is the Emeron uh, 200X. The X stands for bicolor. So this is set to 3200 Kelvin, and this is set to 3200 Kelvin. That's really important because if this hits you from the side while it's not in frame and this is super cold, you know, it looks off. Keep that in mind. All right, next up, we have a, a little nice practical over here and that kind of draws a little bit of attention into this, um, into this, I don't know what it is, like a stelling cost. And um, you know, you can just flip it on. It's an Ikea fixture, very cheap, but it has a nice incandescent bulb in it, which I'll go over in a minute. But this just creates a little bit of interest. And of course, this is all personal preference. I happen to like it. If you hate it, just take that light away. Easy. All right. So uh, usually I go down to my chair and sit, uh, sit down and, you know, and check my monitor. Do I like it or maybe I hate it even. But in this case, I kind of like it. The only thing is it's a bit dark in general. And that's because we use a lot of soft boxes with grids on it. And these grids make sure that all the light is actually directed into one, um, you know, path. If I would take this grid off from the big softbox, it would go all over the place and the back of the room will also be lit up by this light. I usually don't want that because I am a little bit of a control freak. So I use different lights to fill in the room and get the overall room tone up. 
So we have two Ameren 300Cs up in the grid because we're in a studio right now, so these things are here. Um, if you're in a bedroom, you usually don't have that, but if you do want to bring up the room tone, you can maybe open a window or open a curtain or maybe bounce one light into a white surface to just level up the room a little bit. So I, uh, you know, flip these lights on, flip, flip, and that just creates a really nice and soft, you know, sort of atmosphere, I would say. It's a nice mood and it's very warm, something I personally really like. And that's also the reason why I like to use incandescent bulbs. So a little bit of information about these bulbs. Okay, so what I like about incandescent bulbs is that the light quality is far the best, right? So these lights don't have a magenta or green shift. They're just warm lights. And that's because actually what goes on in this light is a tremendous amount of heat. And that heat is very similar to what the sun does, but at a different scale, of course. This light, however, is just an LED light. And these actually shift in color. This is a very cheap one from Ikea, and this definitely shifts in color. So I like to use these lights, especially if it's for small practicals in the frame, because the light quality is just way better. What's also really nice is you can dim them down. So use these very cheap dimmers from your local hardware store, just plug them in and you dim them down. It's as easy as that. So I just happen to fall in love with these, these bulbs. They also come in so many shapes and sizes, like the smaller fitting, like this one, E14 or E27, um, but also like 200 watts or 300 watts even. So yeah, there's a lot of variety. Okay. Back to the, you know, the shaping of the lights. So there's of course a million things you can do with lighting. I just like to keep things clean and simple. I may think that how can this be simple? You have like six lights on, that's true. But I could also do this with less lights and definitely back in the days when I was working from my bedroom, I would have done this with less lights. If you have a bedroom only, I would just find a nice spot in your room and see what you can do there. Maybe you have a, you know, a nice, like corner somewhere, you can put a practical in there and extend it with one of these lights, or maybe you don't have the room for that and just use one light that does it all. Or maybe you want something funkier with, with color, like a funky blue background. How cool is that? So it depends on what kind of videos you're making, but I personally like the warm, the home, you know, the welcomey vibe. And I feel like the blue, for example, is a bit too like in your face. So. That's a bit of my thought process. All right, guys, thank you so much for sticking with me until the end. I had a lot of fun taking you guys along with me on this lighting journey. And, um, you know, if you have any questions, please feel free to let them know in the comments below. I'd love to answer them. And with that being said, you know, we'll catch each other next time. Have a good one. Stay safe. Stay happy. Stay creative.